Wait, is this like a desktop prototype for the Steam Deck? They're just like, yeah, sorry, we couldn't send you a dev kit, but if you want to build one of these monstrosities, here you go. So Valve did a developer focused Steam Deck live stream and there's a lot that us as consumers or if you're watching and you're a dev, you know, a lot that everyone can learn from this. So I took some clips and I'm going to play them and talk about them. Just as an aside, we have gotten a lot of questions about dev kits and whether there's anything special about them, uh, whether there's any special hardware or software or bits that make it easier to develop for. And the answer to that is no, it's just a regular retail prototype unit and there's no extra bits to it. So a lot of the testing you'll wanna do for Steam Deck, you can actually do with hardware you have available. I feel like every time the Valve talks about the Steam Deck, half of the questions can be summed up and answered in that right there. The TLDR is, can a PC do this? Yes, then the Steam Deck can do it. The Steam Deck is just a PC and the dev kits are also just Steam Decks. This baby monitor is seven inches across and is 1280 by 800. This was 73 bucks and it's a really good way to test for Steam Deck legibility because it's basically the same screen, or at least the same specs. We're installing Manjaro, which is a Arch Linux distribution, which is similar to what is on Steam Deck. This version even comes with KDE Plasma, which is the same desktop environment that will ship with Steam Deck. So all in all, this version of Linux is probably the closest thing to what's the, uh, on the deck to test your game. The last piece of this is performance. So if you really wanna find a PC for testing that is similar in specs to a Steam Deck from a performance standpoint, they exist. Uh, we went and found one on Amazon, and after a lot of argument, uh, our engineers and folks on the team found that this mini PC is pretty close. Uh, it runs an AMD 7, uh, AMD Ryzen 7 3750 H, uh, it has Radeon RX Vega 10 graphics and it has 16 gigs of RAM. So the team agreed that while the GPU is a little weaker and the CPU is a little stronger, it's pretty comparable to the specs of the Steam Deck, especially when running at 1280 by 800. So putting it all together, if you put Linux on this box and if you hook up a little monitor and plug in a controller, now you have basically a little hacking deck. And this is one way to try and test out your title with everything together, input, display, Proton and performance. So if you want to grab this thing at home, the ideal setup would be to grab a PS4 controller that's going to run you about $60. Then we have what looks like pretty much the exact screen he was talking about. This is a 7 inch 1280 by 800, which you could also test 720p on this. It's about $73. And then the big one here, the UM700 mini PC, which looks to be the exact box he's talking about. And that's gonna set you back almost $700. So you're gonna have to spend a lot more than a Steam Deck to be able to test this out. But, you know, they do go over how to get uh, Manjaro and set up the operating system. And you can just slap all that together and have effectively a prototype Steam Deck. The architecture itself should be familiar, but what's truly novel about our processor is that it was designed from the ground up to be optimized for the 4 to 15 watt power envelope available to us in this form factor. A lot of early Steam Deck mockups people have been doing before really haven't focused on this. 15 watts is going to make a huge difference in how the power is actually put down into the device versus comparing it to like a 200 watt system or you know something akin to that like this is really power constrained and that's going to have a very big impact on just how this device is going to perform and you really aren't going to be able to see exactly how that is until you have something running that comparably or have the steam deck in your hand unlike a lot of laptops and phones we do not rely on things like turbo boost peak clocks or any kind of bursty performance, and instead use only clocks that we, can, we think we can sustain indefinitely. What that translates to is that the, the performance your game gets in the first 10 seconds is likely to be the same performance you get two hours from now, or maybe even indefinitely if you're plugged into the wall. And that's not the only thing we focused on. We also wanted to provide consistent performance across a wide range of scenarios. You should get the same performance whether you are plugged in 
on battery, docked, charging, not charging, downloading games, or even in some elevated ambient temperatures. For anyone who is familiar with the Nintendo Switch, you will know that handheld mode versus docked mode is a massive difference, and using it in handheld, honestly, kinda not great for a lot of games. Whereas the Steam Deck is trying to target a more universal approach, have games be the same no matter how you're playing it, and I think that's definitely the way to go to try to balance this out, and that developers will then be forced to optimize their games to be played in all these scenarios instead of just being like, oh, well, on the Switch, we can't really get to run that well on handheld, so this is pretty much a dock-only title. Steam Deck does have to be charged every once in a while. And for that reason, we have a Type-C port capable of 45 watts. That should be enough power to both run the device at max load and simultaneously charge at a full rate. The Type-C port could also support external peripherals up to 7.5 watts, which is enough for things like webcams, wired controllers, or even storage devices. You could also use the Type-C port for docking, and in that mode, we can support up to two 4K displays at 60 Hz, and if you opt for half the display bandwidth, you will get USB 3 Gen 2 instead. As you can see on this chart, if you actually compare them in terms of user experience, you'll find that that difference shrinks quite a bit. When it comes to load times, the SD card reader loads the game about 18% slower compared to the NVMe 512GB SSD. Similarly, when it comes to boot times, the 64GB eMMC boots 25% slower compared to the built-in NVMe SSD. Everyone is going crazy speculating on what kind of storage stuff they can do, replacing the NVMe or doing this or that. And Valve has already shown off that they think that the SD card is going to be just fine. That's why they put it in there. And you can see from their data and their charts, again, they think it's going to be a little slower, but it'll be just fine. So we're really going to kind of just have to wait until these get into more people's hands and they can actually do tests on what sort of, like they call it SD. Obviously you aren't using a full size SD card. We need micro SD. So what class of micro SD card should we get? And what's really the sweet spot for that? We probably aren't gonna know for a while. Um, what about when it comes to supporting the deck suspend and resume in game? Do they need anything specific that they have to do? At this point in time, we actually don't think so. Uh, from actually from experience, most games seems to perform just fine coming out of suspend. How much VRAM is on Steam Deck? So um, obviously, so it's 16 gigabyte of unified memory. Uh, we have one gigabyte that's dedicated for the GPU, but really the GPU can also access up to eight gigabyte depending on what's happening. Um, so really, you can really expect to have at least or up to eight gigabytes for the any game or the GPU itself. The Steam Store has been optimized for the deck so that it's accessible with the gamepad, um, but we'll still have all the same powerful features that customers have come to expect. Something new for the deck is the home screen, which brings together content in one place across your library, friends, and the Steam Store. Players can even find your game in the store directly by searching for it with the new Universal Search. Search combines results from your users, library, friends, and the store. Uh, so even if a user doesn't own your game, they can find it just by going to the top of the screen and using the Universal Search. Notifications are something that Steam's had for a while, but they're now unified in one place that's accessible with a dedicated hardware button on, on the Steam Deck. Uh, so you'll be able to see what's happening from anywhere in the UI. One example that I know I'm excited about is the updated Steam Input Configurator. Our updated design system includes features that are designed to be accessible whether you're using a keyboard and mouse, a controller, or the touchscreen. So the Steam Deck is getting a new UI built for that, which will eventually converge into the main Steam client and will replace a lot of the stuff that Big Picture has. And a lot of these features, like the notifications that are going to be on the Steam Deck, are already kind of built in domain Steam. It's just they're cleaned up and optimized to work on a handheld. One concern we've heard from both developers and customers is that PC games can be quite hefty. How will that work on the deck? Well, if your game depots are full of high resolution textures, audio, or movies, you may want to consider configuring depots with lower resolution versions specific to the Steam Deck. You'd upload that content through Steam Pack just like you would for any other depot, but then you'd mark it as Steam Deck only on the partner side. As a little bit of background, Proton is a compatibility layer distributed through Steam. It's downloaded and set up automatically when running any game that needs it. It's made up of a collection of different open source projects, including a heavily modified distribution of Wine. It is not an emulator, 
meaning that your game's executable code runs as is, without any modifications. As most common APIs are already implemented and well tested by a wide variety of existing games, it's pretty common for a new title to work perfectly out of the box without any work needed on the developer's part. Will apps that aren't on Steam work with Proton and be usable on the deck? Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Uh, Proton works great with uh, apps that are outside of Steam as well. And on the deck, we'll actually be improving the UI experience to add non-Steam games to the, to the main UI. So would you prefer a game to use Proton or to have native Linux support? What's the stance on that? Uh, well, we, we have no strong preference. Really, uh, you know, as we discussed, it, it comes down to whatever is the best experience. Uh, so if it's easier for the developer to get to a point where uh, the best experience is, uh, you know, achieved through Proton, we think that's great. I think the TLDR on the Proton segment is that there's a ridiculous amount of apps that aren't going to be native to Linux and they don't expect that to change anytime soon. Proton is going to do the best it can to allow some of those to run on the Steam Deck and make the Steam Deck just be a computer and they are confident in their ability to make a majority of these work and work well. Uh, well, AMD FSR be incorporated into Steam Deck. Uh, so the games that already include FSR will work as is, but also FSR support will be included as part of an OS future release. Uh, therefore, you know, you could potentially use it for games that don't natively support it. So I'm going to quickly jump into the configuration for this game, and I'll set the right trackpad to be a mouse. I'll set the gyro to be a mouse as well, because as we mentioned earlier, this sort of gyro control offers fast and precise one-to-one -one input. This game allows for simultaneous gamepad and mouse, so that's all we have to do. The Steam Deck has capacitive touch joysticks and trackpads, and a great way to use the gyro is to only activate when the player is actively touching one of those cap touch controls. Using both inputs together provides incredible speed and accuracy, but you can still recenter or adjust just by lifting your thumb off the control, much like recentering a mouse on a mouse pad. Uh, so, yeah. a, few, a few folks really wanted to know about local co-op multiplayer games, and so what you can tell us about that. Okay, so yeah, you can um, play local co-op on the Steam Deck. You can, you know, hook controllers in via Bluetooth, or if you have like a hub hooked up to it, you can hook them directly in via USB. And so you can play games that way, or, um, you know, of course, if you're, you have a video out going to a TV, playing together on a TV, um, and then you can also play with uh, remote play together. So you can have those games working where one person's at a different you know, computer and you're streaming from the deck onto that. Okay, so I think the biggest thing to take away from this is Valve wants to do everything they can to enable Steam Deck to just act like a computer, be able to hook up other controllers to this like a computer, dock it, use it with a monitor like a computer, run whatever apps you want like a computer and all this different Steam input stuff is really just to make sure you have as much control as you need and it could ever want. And that's like pretty much the end of the presentation. If you have anything else that you want me to go over, please let me know in the comments, but uh, I'll let them see you out. All right, that just about does it for Steamworks Virtual Conference. It's all about Steam Deck. We really appreciate you giving us your time and we're really looking forward to continuing to take in feedback and work with developers towards getting games running great on Steam Deck.